When in fact water is the number one concern to our community still after a number of years. We have been working in the water quality space for quite a long time. Uh, in the past we've been looking at point source discharges. Those are the sort of direct discharges from factories, from storm water, where you can actually see where the pollution comes from. And we've done a great deal over the last number of years to stop that. So very little of that is occurring, or none should be. Uh, we've also uh, had catchment committees in place for a very long time, working on things like um, soil control, erosion work, stream planting, and other biodiversity aspects of looking after local streams. That work will continue. We even had, for example, the Clean Streams Accord for a long time, where people could get subsidies to plant or fence their stream. So in fact we have been dealing with water quality for a long time but now we're going forward with a new collaborative approach with the community looking at how we partner up to better focus on waterways. Yeah and just to reinforce the point from Paula that over the last 50 years there's been a whole heap of work mm. around um, cleaning up point source discharges. When my father-in-law moved to Hamilton about 50 years ago he would say to me, you could visibly see lots of um, pollution from point source discharges. People wouldn't swim in the river like they do um, today. So I think we should acknowledge all the effort that's gone on to date. But, but moving forward, yeah, we have a different regime. We've got a, we've got a treaty settlement of treaty settlements over the Waikato and Waipa rivers. Um, that provides us with a good framework in terms of decision making that meets iwi aspirations. Mm. We've also set up a um, process to make sure that other key stakeholders are involved in setting water quality limits and targets, and obviously the Waikato River Authority being a key uh, partner in improving water quality as well. So out of all that will come two main um, actions. One is around uh, our policy framework, our regulations to set water quality limits and targets. And so when uh, proposals come up, um, that will impact on water quality in future, they'll have to show how they are meeting those new limits um, for water quality. The second um, action, as Paula said, is, is work on the ground. We have our catchment plans uh, where we prioritise where we're going to get best bang for the buck in terms of water quality, biodiversity mm -hmm. and soil conservation. And that prioritisation work in catchments will help inform our funding on the ground, working with landowners, farmers, and, and other partners like Dairy and Z uh, and the River Authority and yeah, our River yeah. Iwi. So one really good example of that is the Waiora Healthy Rivers Project, which is a co-governance project, so it involves our River Iwi. It also involves all of those um, agricultural stakeholders that, uh, that need to manage their effects into water and the local communities. And uh, recently we were really happy to launch the Waipa Catchment Plan project uh, and we've managed to secure joint funding around that and got all of the knowledgeable people in the same room talking about the same focus on that catchment. So those are the kinds of projects that we're doing now. And, and, and it just reinforces the first point that Paula made that a, a, key, a central theme in our long-term plan is around partnerships. We know that water quality isn't, or poor water quality isn't caused by any action of the regional council, it's, it's people on the ground mm -hmm. doing things and so only by working with those same people we will produce uh, sustainable solutions to water quality. We'll be back with more after the break. Welcome back to Central News. I've got Paula Southgate and Vaughan Payne from the Waikato Regional Council in, and they're carrying on their talk about water quality. Mm. Now, what about what's going on in the Hauraki? Well, the Hauraki, there is a lot of work going on through the catchment committees, the integrated catchment committees, which are focused on managing uh, the Waiho and Piako in terms of sediment, erosion, um, biodiversity and the like. So that work will continue. But in respect to a more focused approach, once the Hauraki uh, Treaty Settlement is in place, we're hoping we'll be able to, to uh, implement a uh, program very similar to what we've just done with the, Waiho, uh, the Waipa catchment, an uh, integrated approach. And, and just like all our rivers in the region, uh, there has been a lot of improvements in cleaning up water quality in the 
Waiho and Piako rivers over the years. So our local councils, our local industries have uh, cleaned up a lot of their point source mm. discharges into those rivers. And, and so our focus is around um, making actions and changes on the ground. Um, a lot of catchment works, as, as Paul's talked about, that are going on in the Waikato and Waipa rivers are also going on in this catchment. So there are community groups working in the upper Kaimai ranges um, as a collaborative mm, yeah. process to, to help improve water quality that flows all the way down mm. into the um, Firth of Thames. And, and we're also doing a lot of collaborative planning with the Auckland Council who um, see a lot of the catchment activities going on in the Hauraki Plains, impacts on the Firth of Thames, impacts on on the um, whole Coromandel area. So, mm. so I think um, a lot of work, but it will um, increase as the treaty settlements um, um, come to pass. Mm. Mm. It must be quite challenging to have successful collaborative relationships with so many different, you know, organisations and iwi. Have there been any obstacles in relation to what's going on in the Hauraki? Well, I think the um, key difference with a collaborative approach is that it does take considerable time and resourcing. You do have to be in the same room. You do have to have the same knowledge base. So it's not as quick as if we just came and created some rules and said, there are your rules, work within those. Uh, we do need to have lots of conversations so everybody understands what's going on with the waterways. The second um, issue is funding is having sufficient resources to do things in the time scale that you want. So we're continuing to have conversations with central government around what the re resourcing might look like post Hauraki settlement so that we all have sufficient uh, resources to do the kind of work that, as I said, we're doing with the Waikato um, Waipa catchment. And because we certainly do think that the Waiho Piako catchment is a significant and very important catchment for our region. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and ju just to reinforce, we want solutions that are long term, mm. not not um, imposing solutions on people. So only by working with landowners and other agencies will we end up um, with people buying into the solutions and therefore more sustainable solutions. Mm. Are landowners receptive to the ideas that the Waikato Regional Council present? I think it, it Depends. Um, depends how radical those those ideas are, and, and that's why you need a collaborative process so that often the ideas are coming from the landowners as opposed to coming from council. Hmm. So. I think the key point is that everybody does want the same outcome. They want to be able to protect the water quality and get on with business. So, you know, at least you're starting from the same base, and there will be some change in the way we do business going forward, but I think if we all buy into it, it's going to be easier.